Welcome to our Chef at the Market virtual demonstration brought to you by RVI. Each week we will be featuring local chefs who will be sharing recipes using farm fresh products sourced from the RVI online marketplace. For more information or recipes, visit our website. Folks, how are you? Um, out in YouTube land, my name is Corey Abdella. Um, not specifically representing any, um, any restaurant at all, but good food um, done simply um, using proper techniques. We are, um, we're about to start the butternut squash hash. Um, this is an inspiration for the fall. Obviously butternut squash coming into season right now. So uh, with a dice of an onion, I would say firstly be careful. Uh, secondly, walk away with all of your digits and dice approximately the same size, if you can, through the whole onion. I always pull the board over the edge so it'll fall into something and not on the counter or on a, a door that's actually sticking out on one of your pretty cabinets. Uh, we're gonna jump into the celery. The dice is about the same size as the onion. We don't mind a rough chop at all. Again, just about the same size. Take your time, be comfy with what you're doing. Again, adjust that board over the edge so I don't create more work and having to clean too much. All right, and now we're gonna tackle this butternut squash. Here we go, we're just gonna cut the top off and I'm gonna get into the, into the bulb, as you can see right there, and the neck. So if you're not comfortable just trying to peel this down, um, I would strongly suggest you cut it in half. You create those two smaller, larger bases, but a smaller, uh, a smaller vertical aspect. Now, when I cut, a lot of people make sure that you're rigid here. I use the back of my, I use the thumb on the back of my knife to create a nice, good structure coming down. Actually, learned this when I was in Germany. So these old German guys doing this, and I was like, hmm, that seems like it works. So, a little bit slippery, um, just to say, so I'm gonna cut these again in half and create that larger base. I'm not worried about anything that comes to a point. Everything is just gonna be perfectly imperfect. Again, right about the same size as the onion and the celery. This gets a little wonky here. I turn it on its larger base and I just keep on turning and going. That is it. These will get slippery at the end, so just let them break off. So I'm gonna cut this up and then um, I'll explain the other bits. I'll get it all prepped and then I'll start cooking. So we're gonna put a couple of crushed peeled cloves of garlic that are one, easy to put in and easy to extract. If you are a garlic fan, and are afraid of vampires, I strongly, strongly suggest you keep this roasted garlic and have this and smear it on bread or, uh, or each piece of your bite of pork. It will definitely add a nice effect. So we'll put four into there. So for the red onion, um, for grilled red onion, basically I just peel it the same way that I do for white onion, okay? But I do not cut it in half, I just cut into it and then I just start taking a peel around. Um, maybe not the size of the knife that you wanna use, but I just find underneath the first, the first peel and I just peel this all around. So this is just gonna go on top of the pork. Now I don't have too much of a, 
of a stable base here, so I push down firmly. I ease the knife in as much as I can. I grab it on both sides, making sure that I just come straight down and slow. Your digits are important, please respect them. And then if you need to just level it off, you can just level it off. Or not if you do not feel safe. Again, it is most important that you feel comfy. There, the onion is prepped, pretty simply. Um, I wanted to take a minute uh, to let you know through RVA, RVA Ag Marketplace, um, we have been provided through uh, Windy Hill Farm, Little Green Farm, Island Farms, and Deli Caprini Farm for this absolutely stunning product. Um, I encourage you to take a look uh, at the marketplace, uh, see what is there for you, and support local. Uh, so what I'm doing is, from Windy Hill Farms, we have two eight ounce boneless pork chops, and I am gonna hit them with a little bit of marinade. I also encourage to dry off your pork chops or any meat that is gonna come cryo vac packed like this is. When you sear and or grill, um, or however you're gonna prepare this product, it will adhere a little bit easier. So what'll happen is the, the moisture will not sort of boil on the top and have to evaporate first, but you'll get that good, clean seal uh, and brown that you're looking for. We're gonna take a sprig of rosemary. Um, simply strip it. So this is basically what I do at home. I put items straight on a plate, a little bit of oil on the bottom. The crush and very, very rough chop. On the bottom. Pork. Again, very rough chop items. If you want anything else on here, hearty herbs when we're talking about uh, marjoram, sage, thyme, all of this works. We're gonna cover this on plastic wrap with a little bit of cling film, should I say. Two hours, up to two hours, 30 minutes, makes a great change in the pork itself. Um, and then we're gonna sear it off. This is what you wanna hear. If you can hear any of the sizzling in this pan, it's kinda of sorta of what we wanna create. We're gonna know our pan's a little bit hot. If you look at the pan in the back that has, that's starting to smoke, that pan is actually ready to go. So we're just gonna turn them off and I'm gonna roll right into every one of them. Again, this is our, this is our butternut squash hash. I'm going to start off with the onions and the celery. Salt and pepper. Next will be the onions. I'm not going to turn the pan on. We've all had a pan get too hot at home. Please be careful. Make sure you lay items away from you. Lay them away from you so the oil splatters in a different direction than yourself. Please be careful. Um, but now we have two items working. We have this, the butternut squash hash, um, about a third of the way done with the onions, and then we have some, some onions going in the back for our relish. Always individually season. And then check the seasoning at the end. At this point, I'm just gonna add a dash more oil and I'm gonna put these right in the oven. So it's almost set it and forget it. You can set a timer, say 12, 13, 14 minutes. We are gonna put the butternut squash in that has been just about diced at the same size and not, believe it or not. I'm gonna season a little bit more with salt and pepper. I personally very, very much enjoy kosher salt. There is a, um, you know, a, a very flaky coarse and a small flake kosher salt. This is gonna sit um, on medium heat. I'll add three tablespoons, four tablespoons of water, or if you will, an ounce of water. Let it evaporate. Keep on tasting it with a spoon. Um, when this is halfway done, I'm going in with my pork. We're gonna sear the pork off and we're gonna make a plate. 
I am going to put these right in. I'm not going to use any herbs or any garlic in the pan with this pork because I've already got it. So um, I am going to add a dash of oil. Even though I'm smearing some on, I'm going to add just that little bit of oil also. All right. We're going to take our onions out right now. Here we are roasted. Really simple, really easy. Um, we're going to let those cool off so we can handle them. And we're just going to do a little rough chop. All right, we're going to do a flip. Look at that nice brown seal on both sides. We're going to let this sit here in this pan. Turn the heat down a little bit. You can see the smoke coming off. All right. All right, so we have got our either grilled or seared and roasted onions. Again, I had the garlic. That is gonna be a usable product in my little relish here. And I think everybody is gonna enjoy a great deal. Because you're home and I had onions in here and onions are going back, um, we are gonna continue to use this bowl. So I'm going to take this garlic, as you can see. I'm going to chop that up. I'm going to make that part of the plan. And you can see how I'm just doing nothing special, but just making a few rough cut chops on these rings here. You can just cut them in half, elongate them out, and just cut them and get them going. So I can pull the, pull the board. Okay, I'm going to take the stems off. We can save the stems as well. And this is just going to be a rough chop. And again, I don't mind some of the stem, but not the hardcore fibrousy parts. We're going to have this laying on the plate. I'm going to take this pork chop, just simply put it on top. Now again, folks, nothing here is out of the ordinary. I'm just trying to add a little bit of color and texture. You know, this may be something that you just want to put around the pork because this is flavor. And there you have it. We have a Windy Hill Farms seared pork loin, butternut squash hash, and a red onion relish. Thank you.